and uh, welcome to this edition of Portal, a doorway into the latest happenings in the world of technology, leadership, business. Well, today we have with us uh, Mr. Venkat Raman K.R. Uh, welcome, Venkat. Thanks. Thanks for being on this podcast. Uh, he is, uh, by background, an engineer, but engineer turned now into a management professional and he's part of the core leadership team at uh, Tiger Analytics, which is a leading uh, you know, analytics consulting firm. Uh, well, he comes with many years of experience having his stints prior to Tiger at uh, Capgemini and l and uh, At Tiger Analytics, he's helped the organization grow almost 10x in the last uh, five plus years. Well, he calls himself a strength finder and we are going to talk, I mean, he's going to bring some more insights into that and having mentored and coached uh, multiple individuals in his professional career. Given the kind of industry, uh, you know, he brings in, uh, he is from the background that he, uh, he has very rich, enrich, uh, enriching experience in his domain. And uh, you're going to hear great insights uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of takeaways for anybody watching this podcast, right? So, uh, to begin, uh, Venkat, uh, today's world of analytics, uh, you know, uh, uh, data is the new oil, yeah. new currency, uh, it's all over the place. Uh, the hot skills, uh, you know, that uh, especially your organization is into. If you could throw some lights on uh, strategically, uh, given that skills are difficult to find mm -hmm. because it's an ever evolving skills, there is always the debate between you know build versus buy in terms of talent and also uh, for somebody who wants to begin a lot of opportunities we know in this uh, field today uh, for somebody who wants to build their career what would be those you know uh, need areas in the market mm -hmm. right uh, for people to skill up and uh, for people to really go outside uh, and you know look for some upskilling you know uh, what tracks can they uh, uh, you know, really subscribe to in terms of technology and tools. So that's a two-part question, right? So let me try and uh, answer the first part, right? Uh, given that analytics is in a sunrise uh, sector, right? The industry is still in its nascent stages. Uh, uh, the build versus buy uh, eventually will lean towards build because you know uh, a lot of these uh, skill stacks or tech stacks that we look for are uh, are extremely dynamic. Right? So what started as mainframes, in a way, right. that was the original, you know, the oldest parentage of uh, what we call today as analytics. Right? Right. And then right. it has over evolved to how do big data and to whatever today, the Gen AI part and so on. Given this, uh, a significant portion is always built. Having said that, analytics is not just about technology, right? Mm -hmm. There is a understanding of domain, there is this business understanding which is very critical for an any analytics professional to add value and see how that value uh, or what they do is impacting their client and their work, so to speak. Right. So given that, that's where the build uh, 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 slightly goes down and the buy component comes in because uh, we need people who understand the domain. We need people who understand how the process works. Let's say we're working with one of the world's largest uh, CPG companies, right? Uh, then is there some other people who not only understand okay SQL, Python, all those things, right? that's one side of the story, but also okay, while I understand these are the data points that are flowing in, what is the process at the client's end? How does it impact? So that then you're able to choose what kind of architecture, if you're talking about data engineering or even if you're talking about say modeling in data science, what are the relevant data you know, uh, points, whether you build applications for certain process which are not there today and so on. right? Given that, that business understanding or domain understanding is where we lean towards the uh, buy component. Buy so that's the first part. Uh, as to the second part, right, uh, in a way borrowing from my first answer, uh, programming aptitude is a given, I think, uh, given the scope that or the, the, in, the world that we live in. However, even within that, see, technology is just an enabler. Uh, most people right. tend to forget that, yeah. right? Uh, technology is a tool, every technology, whether it's a language or a product or a system, doesn't matter. It's a tool in order to aid someone take a better decision. That's, right. that's what, when we say data-driven decision. Right? Right. So given that, uh, are we curious about, let's say, you know, right. how things work? Right. That would be on a slightly on a softer side, right? Curious about how things work, that's one. Willingness to uh, fail, 
would be the second component, uh, yeah, right? Yeah. Especially in data science, because there's no fixed approach. We were just discussing the right. other day, right? right. Uh, every uh, problem statement will have different ways of approaching it and solving it. And sometimes you need to do a lot of exploratory data analysis to understand uh, and see what are the patterns which are emerging. How is the data speaking to you, so to speak? Yeah. So yeah. for that. Uh, people need to be a bit more curious about it and not just go and saying, you know, I know this language it could be SAS, it could be Python or whatever, right? And say, I just want to implement it. No. Sure. First, understand. Uh, one of our uh, chief uh, is reminded, uh, as we were uh, telling you this, one of our uh, senior most data science experts, right? He always says, 80% uh, of the initial problems, right? You can solve it using advanced Excel. Yeah. Which brings me, right? How many people today want to willingly go and learn right. Excel? Absolutely. So it starts with that, and then you can always build on top of it. Right. Thanks, Venkat. That was uh, very insightful. Uh, like you said, build and buy go hand in hand. Uh, if you could throw some light on, uh, you know, uh, recruitment and upskilling, recruitment and training are mm -hmm. two sides of the coin, right? Yeah. Uh, so given that you are in this niche skills, uh, hot skills, uh, how has that? Uh, what is what are some of the practices that you have seen work very well, both from when you hire freshers, hmm. you know, to also when you get laterals and you know get them, uh, you know, into the right culture, into the right mold, right fitment. If you could share some practices. Okay, so from a recruitment standpoint, right, uh, the biggest challenge, uh, I think, not just for us, not just for analytical setups, but in general for all tech setups is. Uh, every company is a tech company today, right? Whether you are a bank uh, or whether you are even a government entity or a manufacturing, uh, manufacturing setup. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's no more that you know you end up uh, either recruiting or losing people to just your closest set of competitors. Uh, the world is become smaller that way. Given that uh, from a recruitment angle, whether it is freshers or laterals, one of the things we always try to do is. Uh, at least try and be a bit uh, unique in the senses. We make sure that whether a candidate uh, clears our process or not, we make sure we share the feedback. Even someone who clears us, oh, wow. we right. ensure, we try, we educate our panels to try and as much as possible share uh, what they could have done better or what they have done well. Either way, right? It's a, That's a great service. <laughs> uh, right? Because then, uh, mm. It's it's a win-win, right? Because right. for the candidate, he or she understands, okay, this is why mm. it has clicked and that's why I'm getting into a setup. Right. Right. So in a, in a way, it's a positive reinforcement for them. Yeah. And for those who are not able to clear, it's still a good point because they know that, okay, after six months, they can come back and try. And whether it helps uh, uh, them joining Tiger or it helps them join elsewhere, how does it matter? Sure. End of the day, we, it's a healthy yeah. uh, practice. So that's one thing we I always believed, uh, you know, Tiger, we have done uh, a bit differently. Sure. Uh, the other part is we have been very uh, mindful of uh, what what can we do to ensure that they are settled in, right? So a lot of times, even at the entry level, especially at entry level, our uh, engagement or training programs start almost 60, 90 days before someone joins. Uh, so we do a lot it's like of very things. intensive. Wow. Pretty intensive. Uh, we we take them through. Let's say if we're talking about entry level, right? Um, we try and ensure that they uh, we are hand holding them and guiding them in that campus to corporate setup. But apart from that, right? Also getting them a refresher on say uh, even something as simple as Python or SQL. Again, right? If I'm going back to the basics, sure. Uh, sure. They may be coming from let's say uh, some of the best institutes in the country, uh, right? But it's always good for them because they also know that, oh, okay, this is what I need to be, uh, you know, clear on before I get in. So that's one. Uh, and a lot of times what also happens is telling them stories, business stories that works, uh, right? Uh, think of it almost like a brown bag uh, session of sorts, right? Where we tell them what kind of problems we solve, how do we solve. So that gives them engaged and also sure. gets them hooked in terms of, oh, okay, this is what the org does. This is how it is approaching some wow. solutions. So that's on the, say, the recruitment slash training part. Uh, but within the org, once someone is within the org, uh, straight off the bed, we call our function as people development. There's a very intentional choice uh, because it's not about training, it's not just about learning, but it's more about developing people. So that's the funda that we as an org believe yeah, by, yeah, yeah. Uh, which means we have a fantastic mentoring 
set up we all every every individual who joins us has a mentoring uh, mentor yeah. uh, uh, you know uh, identified for them but over and beyond that there are these uh, five or six tenets as we call them in our function or in our org for for development one is self paced we make sure that any solution any initiative any journey there is a self paced component there's a asynchronous component which which is more like allowing people to learn at their pace uh, the second is uh, self discovery which is you know funneling to uh, uh, at appealing to the people's curiosity okay there are these certain things that someone has to go through let's say as part of a learning journey let's say again go back to the fresher example right there is a set of courses or a module they have to cover but they are also given access to something beyond that and now it's up to them to discover what is that one or two areas that they that want they to want deep to yeah, yeah deep dive yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's the second tenet the third tenet we always believe is peer learning so t- as much as possible social or peer learning right you go a part of a cohort like right. the way you next also does right there right. is a cohort then there is someone else who is going through the same journey as you right you right. may be an expert on certain field but that's always having that community feeling helps you be more comfortable you are willing to fail more you are willing yeah, to yeah, yeah. ask you know sure. more questions yeah, 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 yeah. so that's the third tenet uh there are the fourth tenet is more on uh, activity based which is gamification so we rely a lot on hackathons or case study driven uh, uh learning and finally the other two are more on strengths based which i already alluded to uh, is, which is basically people uh which is also tied to the curiosity part right if i am someone who's naturally inclined towards say certain skill sets or certain tech stacks or you know a, a particular domain yeah can we as a org as a function uh inculcate or encourage them to pursue go deeper in that sure and all sure. this has to funnel together with the sixth tenet which is how project ready or end of the day the business impact right so that sure. always is the is the key uh, key or the north star for yes. someone to yeah go. for someone no very interesting so you know so increasingly we are moving towards less of very specific to a tool skilling hmm. to a holistic uh, right Correct. because uh, i've heard many times that if i if i just get trained on the on the how hmm. right uh, against the why and the what uh, yeah you know maybe only 20% of what i really learn will get applied because it's ever changing your Correct. businesses might change the needs might change the tools might change the tools will change uh, so very interesting now Uh, you know extending that uh, venkat like you said every organization is becoming a tech a digital organization um now people uh, across the organizations that us as unix as we interact with be it manufacturing be it construction everywhere they want to go digital and the, the challenge that they f- face is the inertia that people have hmm. uh, right uh, and uh, where to begin uh, demystify you know uh, especially from the analytic side because that is what will give them ROI so if you could show throw some lights on, uh, throw some light on when we say analytics when we say let's say cross functional sales marketing people to appreciate data learning what what do you think should be i mean is that so tough or are there some fundamentals which people anyway know uh, you know so and where can organizations begin in that journey because they already know the domain right like you said correct yeah. correct so great question mine uh so uh, let me start with digital right so i think uh, that's a very uh, overused term, term today yeah. <laughs> and everyone has their own understanding of digital and yeah. by extension because my simplest understanding is digital has these four components right social mobile analytical and cloud that's right uh and coming to analytics uh again that's a very overused term today thanks to what's happening in the macro environment that what does even analysis or analytics constitute right, right. Uh, for us and for me personally i always approach it from a very first principles thought process which is statistics right starts with uh, and in india the good or uh, i don't know if it's a good or a bad thing our education system has made sure one thing right uh, across the globe indians are the best or uh, most literate in terms of mathematical aptitude that's right uh, right no wonder we churn out so many engineers so given that Uh, what most people tend to focus on is on the coding part but they forget that there is actually a mathematical component and yeah. more importantly the statistical, statistical part, yeah. part right so for organizations it would serve well if there are a concerted push towards encouraging and creating the ecosystem to encourage people to embrace stats right, right. it could be right. it could mean as simple as 
uh, again going back to the first principle right excel can you do scenario planning in excel uh, can you do simple stuff like pivot use slicers even at the basics right uh, if let's say you are given a rough data set a csv format right can you play around with it try and uh, use some logic to say you know starting with mean median mode to even regression right? uh, you will be surprised y is equal to mx plus c is a com i mean it's something we have learned in our uh, schooling right? but how many people remember it yeah. and how many people are able to translate uh, how to apply this in a business context yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that i think would help right getting people comfortable with it and there are ways to do that uh, but if we can most organization especially non uh, traditional uh, or rather traditional organizations who are not usually from the tech background before uh, scaring people off if we can do some concentrated push to say you know get them comfortable with uh, where does data flow in from uh, right, right. how would you do it in excel and most people would do would do that's right they excel is a it's, it's given that. right most yeah. people would do it right, and right. in yeah. that setup can you identify those one or two uh, influencers or champions people who would naturally be in every department in every org right you will have right. these folks who would be good at uh, sure. uh, playing around in data sure. in sure. excel sure sure natural tap aptitude it, natural yeah. aptitude will be there tap them and get them to be the champions so that others are also motivated to uh, yeah. pursue yeah. so that would be a good place uh, another good place to start would be sql because compared to other languages querying language is slightly right. easier for most right. people to pick up right? right you don't need to have done engineering you don't have right. to come from that background to pick it right. up you can pick it up uh, of late we are also seeing uh, visualization uh, right we spoke about a lot on uh, the other side but data visualization even that right yeah. you don't have to know how uh, the modeling or the data pipelines work for the end user even if they know okay let's say reading charts which is again goes back to statistics right where do you use a pie chart where do you use a histogram uh, where do you use a bar chart those kind of things and how do you interpret data interpretation yeah. which is again common in a lot of your uh, entrance examinations correct, correct even correct. that is a fantastic place to get the entire org's quotient high on the data account absolutely absolutely and that when you couple that with the problem solving correct domain understanding domain understanding is a big amplifier right i firmly believe uh, and i have seen this play out i was recently uh, in conversation with someone from one of these uh, uh, new age small private banks and uh, how they have uh, managed to do this uh, so i think this org was acquired by a big uh, asian behemoth uh, again a banking entity but they have been able to do this uh, transformation because right. they focused on this fundamentals they ensure that everyone in the org is at least 1% better on data understanding and excel and these fundamental things absolutely you know so there is category of uh, you know across an organization right uh, when you talk about data analytics there are users of data analytics which will be the let's say it typically in a manufacturing or a construction everybody in the Correct. organization would be a user then there are implementer and then there are decision uh, makers. makers correct uh, now when you have to implement and we have to raise the digital quotient uh, this there are two parts typically that organizations look at taking is building a coe center of excellence hmm. which can actually uh, you know a data analytics team get the best talent from outside and actually uh, you know design solutions architect the, the entire uh, you know so, uh, you know data pipelines uh, architecture solutions um, versus hmm. Uh, you know getting their team the domain knowledge the team who, who has a rich domain knowledge getting them to become data scientists right so to some extent you need to have a coe but on a larger scale what i have seen is i mean both have their own merits right so is it better to teach a domain guy deep analytics i'm not talking about just the superficial right being helping him be, him or her becoming a data scientist or getting a data scientist you know getting uh, them skilled on the domain right <laughs> so which one do you think is a better approach or i mean their own really maybe both have their own merits some thoughts on that a great question once again vinay thanks for asking that uh in my experience my understanding what i've seen work is uh like you rightly pointed it's not both as its pros and cons the better way to look at probably or frame this uh, frame the lenses 
which one should we start doing first yeah uh, from that perspective i would say uh, if you are a traditional setup uh, let's start by educating the masses on the basics so by that what i mean is let's get the domain experts or the process experts comfortable with the idea or the notion of data driven data decision making and analytics. get them inspired enough inspired right? enough so let that happen or let that would yeah. be the first phase yeah and in the process work with maybe i don't know right setups like us for example or competitors or industry like us to say hey take us on this road map right okay. everyone has to start somewhere that's right so there we can you know there are these organization like us who can step in who can help build that road map and eventually you transition right it's yeah. build operate transfer like how you have road construction <laughs> this is a similar thing coes are a, you know you will eventually need a coe there is no right. doubt about right. it right. but what will happen is um when you start the way i suggested uh when you getting a techy even if you're hiring a chief data scientist he or she is going to face a lot of struggle to get the other department heads let's say you're a car match manufacturing right. setup your your shop floor uh, or plant heads for right. them to you know there is a chief data officer reaching out like they are in their own world they have their own challenges for them to at least say okay this is how someone like this can help me take a better decision yeah. so for that yeah. that would i would slightly prioritize and then eventually start building out these techies and what will also aid is by the time you actually end up as a org building that coe and you have this lot let's say a pool of 30 40 or 50 data scientists for example when they reach that slight maturity where they begin to understand the process the person on the other side who is the domain expert they can explain they can yeah. at least there is a shared uh, language to speak there is a shared understanding of why data driven decision making is important why data analytics is yeah, important yeah, yeah. so all that will it will be like you're solving for the long term it will be a short yeah, term pain yeah, but yeah. it will work well in the long term is yeah. what i think and again this i think what you alluded to is uh, very important to uh, you know i mean it's a mix of both like you said and typically in organizations uh, uh, venkat uh, they don't have everything right it's Correct. not that it's a magic pill that you know i implement a solution and uh, tomorrow i see a business impact Correct. right because the very fact that how they collect the data do they have do they have the right data and uh, you know are they measuring the right outcome hmm. you know there are too many moving parts right Correct. so for somebody to really look at becoming mature in terms of the skills and also in terms of the impact that they see typically is it like is it a long journey or obviously it's going to not happen Im- immediately right but if they don't do it then mm. they are in i mean uh, they will be much much behind but uh, as your organization has you know i'm sure you know, i mean you work with so many firms helping them with those business problems business solutions when can people see that impact is it sudden is it or even if it is not sudden there is some impact which they have to wait so any thoughts on that uh honestly there is no one size fits all answer right it uh straight off the bat it depends on the uh, the maturity the analytical maturity of uh, the team or the the org that we are working with uh for example right if it's a very traditional uh, industry where you don't even have the applications that capture data in the first right right then typically we recommend at least in my observation we have noticed uh, what i see from the industry when i generally read also is takes about 18 to 20 months to uh, set the processes, processes in place educate people on why certain data has to be captured in the right format uh, build up the applications that will ensure it that's one side of the story having said that even if you have whatever data right any organization will have some bit yeah. if you want to have a small poc uh, right uh, a small use case that can be tested out that typically takes about 6 months to see a, a first uh, you know leaf or the first sprout so 6 months 3 to 6 months is a good enough time if you have even some base info base data uh, but if you want to really build uh, as a sustainable setup at least 2 years is a bare minimum bare. i would see okay. because then you are building the pipelines you are putting the data warehouse in place you are ensuring that all these applications are talking to each other there's a lot of uh, you know uh, those senses that has to be taken then as a org you will start thinking okay how many of this information i should store in store in cloud uh, cloud versus on prem all those things comes up right so uh, again um, most organizations are there but uh, even then uh, it would it would take that 6 months at least right if assuming you have something to give a good use case to see it 
But usually by the sixth month, you see a tremendous value out of it. Yeah. Yeah. So it is a long haul, right? It, it is, is a long haul. Yeah. So uh, you know, compared to uh, way India or Indian organizations have adopted, uh, you know, analytic culture, data, data analytics, data science adoption, compared to the way it's happening worldwide, do you see any big difference? Do you see that? Industries here have still to catch up. They still are, uh, you know. I mean, that inertia has not yet broken up. More complacent, or are there some examples where you see no? India and Indian organizations have also been very, very aggressive in this. I actually believe uh, Indian orgs today are actually ahead of the world in many really? pockets. Okay. Uh, the best use case again, right? Uh, not just from the industry, overall macro landscape. Look at the kind of um, uh, changes we have done in terms of you know the Jan uh, Jam thing, right? Which is Jan account, the Aadhaar and Aadhaar, the yeah. mobile, right? So the kind of fintech proliferation or the way the banking scenery mm-hmm. has changed. A lot of this, I think, uh, we are way ahead of uh, mm-hmm. a lot of uh, developed and Western entities. Um, I also noticed, you know, for example, I was recently reading a very interesting uh, piece on Asian Paints, uh, how they were one of the earliest uh, uh, organizations to procure a mainframe setup. Then this is 40 years ago, you know, 30, 40 years ago. Apparently, they were the second, right next to TCS. Uh, this was when probably TCS was led by, I think, Ramadurai or even right, his predecessor. Right, right? Right, right. Uh, for a pure play manufacturing paint setup like Asian Paints to actually invest in a you know, computer mainframes department setup down to today where they're able to they're taking just in time data driven decision making that's right. the best uh, i mean top of the mind example i can think of sure. yeah. so i'm pretty sure that we as a uh, as a org i mean as a country a lot of organizations in the country are ahead uh, i think the challenge comes where uh, because of the diversity as a country right even in the operating uh, dimensions <laughs> let's say uh, we still are reluctant to invest sometimes as a org. No, uh, yeah. So that's where I think that that mindset could change, but I'm seeing it change. So sure, sure. We, we are there, I would say. There's huge opportunity. That is a huge opportunity, yes. Which means a lot of uh, you know need for people to skill, upskill, right? Tremendous uh, focus from both from an individual perspective. Now, with generative AI coming in, uh, Venkat, uh, what what do you think should be the necessary skills? Where is it impacting the industry? And for, you know, right from a fresher looking for a job to people upskilling, mid-career professionals. What do you think are a couple of skills which are very important? Uh, again, another very overused term in the last 12-15 months, right? And see, the funny part with at least Gen AI is that there's a development happening literally every single day. Uh, even those organizations, not just us, right? Even those organizations are the cutting edge fr- forefront, right? Whether you talk about NVIDIA or Google or whatever, they are also scrambling because every day there is a new development happening. So given this, uh, a sensible way for a lot of our, um, let's say, fresh graduates, young graduates is, uh, what can you do, uh, right? Instead of chasing the shiny thing, yeah, can you get the basics right, right? For example, prompt engineering. Yeah. When t- typically when someone talks about Jenny right? the first easiest thing is, uh, can you learn how to write better prompts? This is almost equal, you know, basic skill today, I would say, as, as equal as knowing how to search effectively on Google. Uh, right? Even that is something no, most people don't know today, uh, right? And that is a, it's a learnable skill. So that's one uh, straight off the bat. The second is, uh, can we also be a bit more, again, going back to the curiosity part, right? Okay. Uh, Jine is here uh, to stay. We are going to see a lot of benefits from it. But at the individual level, what problems can I solve uh, sure. using it? A mindset, yeah. Mindset, right? There are so many platforms like yours, uh, Kaggle, HackerRank. You know, there are these problem statements. People have, you know, shared, shared you know, data yeah, sets. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can people pick up right. uh, yeah. something and try it in their spare time, right? So that is something I think uh, would benefit a lot of uh, the young gen folks. Uh, I'm sure most of them invest in, uh, let's say, 
OTT uh, subscription. Yes, yes. Why not invest instead of that in say a ChatGPT subscription, right? Uh, you know, it's what twenty dollars uh, per month. Right. Uh, I don't know whatever, right? Or there are other cheaper alternatives. I'm not recommending anything. But my point is that willingness to invest there versus why not here, or, or right. willingness to go through a course. Again, that's uh, picking up uh, as a trend. But a lot more folks could. Uh, why should it only be folks? who don't have a job or freshers right I mean, even those people yeah who are working yeah. who are working they can benefit right they, it could be in a very small way in their own whatever work right uh, whatever work they are doing you could be a let's say a logistical man logistics manager in a, a mobile or a manufacturing company or you could be a, a relationship manager in in a bank doesn't matter right but that curiosity hey, okay everyone is talking about jenny can I at least if nothing is do a basic crash course or you know basic boot camp if right. even right. not people aren't willing to do that and saying there are these uh, mooks massive online courses right like your coursera and all can you start with auditing a course because when you audit a course you don't have to pay for it or other things learn if you are still finding it engrossed then enroll in uh, one of the bigger programs more people can get excited is what i'm saying we have a massive talent advantage uh, the question is are we leveraging that? leveraging it and they are, forget we leveraging it are the people themselves yeah uh, realizing it and I, leveraging it i guess that direction is is very important because no longer we can rely on only cost advantage correct right? india correct. being uh, low cost <laughs> it have we have to be known as a uh, 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 country which has those skills right correct. competency which is a very important uh, excellent so like you mentioned from statistics on one side to prompt engineering on, on the, the other, other side correct. right so the entire uh, you know a length and breadth of uh, you know all these uh, tools uh, practices that people have to learn and adopt uh, <clears throat> great insights venkat uh, in the last as a summary uh, venkat if you could talk if you could just let everybody know on uh, with the cutting edge problem solving that you have been part of where do you see technology analytics going in the next 5 10 years what is happening what is there in store uh, you know from business wise things that you see if you could share uh, i think business wise uh, we have spoken a lot maybe I'll slightly for a change I'll try and touch up on the consumer side right uh, given the pace that which we are go- growing uh, the industry the the whole landscape uh, i would imagine in another 5 7 years as consumers not just as businesses each of our consumers you will have uh, you know models running on your respective phones everyone has a smartphone right which that's is already right. happening that's right. that's so you will start uh, a day won't be far when people will start uh, doing data driven decision making for their personal you know day to day life right uh, uh, and it's already happening uh, like someone i don't know who said this right i remember this quote uh, the future is here it is just unevenly distributed, distributed. <laughs> so uh, i'm pretty sure in some pocket of the world people are already using it to take certain data driven decisions for their personal lives right whether it's being uh, uh, how do you i don't know right uh, how do you get the right uh, paneer butter masala to how do you make uh, a right investment uh, yeah. or how do you learn right yeah. even learning right uh, you have the likes of uh, khan academy duolingo right which right, have right. which are already there like a platform you pick and choose pick and based choose. on your likes recommendations correct so very soon it will be at a very custom individual level so right. i think that way it's very exciting uh, question is are we as consumers individuals and by extension businesses ready to uh, right it's both ways sometimes the consumer has to get ready first and then the businesses will cater sometimes is the other way around so awesome. both will is something i am looking forward to excellent excellent that was that was very valuable thank you for the your time uh, venkat it's Thanks, been a very me. enriching uh, you know podcast great insights from you and i think all our uh, viewers uh, from beat somebody who's working to somebody who's an uh, entry level graduate there were so many points uh, that they can take away and actually uh, you know look forward to benefit from that thank you for your time my and, pleasure uh, guys you know with that we are done and uh, have a good luck to everyone Thank you.